Retinoblastoma is the most common intraocular malignancy in children. It accounts for around 11% of all the tumors. It arises due to the mutation of the RB1 gene, which is located on the long arm of the chromosome 13. Though we know a lot about the topic, but what troubles us always is the genetics part. I'll be trying to cover genetics as short as possible in this video. Thank you. So this is the chromosome 13. Chromosome 13 is an acrocentric chromosome. It has a long arm, that is a Q arm, and a short arm, that is a P arm. The RB1 gene is located on the long arm. The chromosomes are stained by specific staining techniques and according to which we can know the exact location of these. As you can see, these are the different bands which are obtained by the staining techniques. The exact location of the RB1 gene is on the Q arm on the second part of the 14th band. It is the first tumor suppressor gene and it codes for RB protein. Now so these RB proteins have important function in the cell cycle. This is a cell cycle, there is a G1 phase that is a growth phase, S phase which is a DNA synthesis phase, G2 and an M phase where mitosis occurs. RB1 codes for the protein RB which acts on the G1 phase. Now how it acts is that E2F which has a function, E2F is also a protein which enables the transcription of the DNA. Now PRB has an affinity for the E2F gene. When it is in a bound form, it prevents the transcription of the DNA. Well, when the E2F is in the free form, it enables the transcription of the DNA. So, when there is a mutation in the RB1 gene, the protein, the RB protein won't be formed, and due to which uh, there will be uncontrolled division and the growth of cells, which leads to the tumor growth and tumorigenesis. Now, looking at how the cell function is affected during the mutation. So, in case of the mutation of uh, one copy or in the case of the mutation of the both copies, the cell function is affected in different ways. When the both copies are normal, the cell function is also normal. When one of the copies is affected as you can see here, the cell function is still normal because of the one normal copy of the gene. But when the both the copies are affected, as you can see here in this case, both the copies are affected, the cell function will also be abnormal. This forms the basis of the two hit hypothesis which I am going to see later. Looking into the inheritance of the retinoblastoma, in 1971 Dr. Alfred Knudsen gave the two hit hypothesis model according to which there are two types of inheritance that is the hereditary and the sporadic. Looking at the hereditary pattern of inheritance, in this one parent is affected having both the copies of genes which are abnormal and the normal parent the both the copies of genes are normal. So due to this, one copy of the gene in the offspring will be abnormal. So what happens in hereditary retinoblastoma is the one gene which is affected is from the birth and that is the germline mutation that is the first hit and the second hit is after the birth. Because one of them is a germline mutation, there are predisposition to other tumors such as pinealoblastoma, soft tissue sarcomas and melanomas. Also the bilateral retinoblastoma is more common in this variant. So you can see your first hit which is a germline mutation, the second hit which is a somatic mutation which is after the birth. Other one is a sporadic mutation which is not inherited and which may occur de novo and the both hits are together after the birth. So the risk of transmission to the offspring is almost nil in this compared to hereditary which has around 40% of the chances of transmission into the offspring. So as you can see here how the two hits together causes a tumor. So this is the sporadic form. One more variety which is seen is the sporadic hereditary form in which the mutation is a germline mutation but it is not from an affected parent. Parents are phenotypically normal. So it is believed that the mutation occurs during the fusion of the gametes. So this is one of the other forms which have been recently recognized. So this is in short about the genetics of retinoblastoma. I hope it was easy to learn and understand. Thank you.